going to show you how to make my autumn inspired scarf. This scarf is an eight row repeat. It's very lacy. I did make it on a half gauge loom. Actually, I used my smaller Leisure Arts oval loom. You can use any half gauge loom. I would use half gauge only for this um, because it is meant to be a smaller scarf, not so wide. This one ended up being four inches wide. I made it five foot four because that's about how tall I am. I told my height there. And um, it's a nice, just a nice little lightweight scarf to wear in, in the fall. Um, not so heavy, but warm enough. It's a four weight yarn that it would be nice. I think it would look good too also as a, a shawl, a rectangular shawl. I could even make a blanket with it. Now at the end of the video, the tutorial, I'm going to have tips and review. And my tips, and I'm going to mention this while I'm working it, but I'm going to show you some examples of why this needs a border. Okay, so stay tuned for that if you want to know that part. Or you can go ahead and get started on your project and come back and watch the tips later. That's up to you. Okay, so let's get started. And by the way, that scarf is a, is a darker, brighter orange than my camera's picking up. Um, I don't know why it's coming out that way, but we know sometimes cameras don't work well with oranges and reds. Okay. So you can do any cast on you want. I did a garter cast on. I use a garter cast on a lot. If you watch me much, you know I do. Um, and this one I thought looked good with a garter cast on. And it's entirely up to you what cast on you want to use. Okay, I'm going to show you how I did this pattern with a border. This is a border I recommend. I highly recommend. Um, but you can use a different border, and we're going to discuss that in the tips and review in a little bit. So, I'm coming from peg one, and this is an eight row repeat, by the way, half gauge loom. 14 pegs. It's worked on 14 pegs. Now, I will say before I start, I did try this on a KB, and it was a little tighter. It didn't have the um, drape I wanted it to have, but you definitely could do it on a KB loom. Uh, and it was, I gained about a half inch on the Leisure Arch Loom compared to the KB Loom because of the circumference of the peg difference. So different peg circumference is going to make a difference in how lacy it looks or how much tighter it looks. So we're coming from peg one. We are going to wrap the first two pegs and we're going to knit them off. Now I have, as you see, I have marked them for my border. I have two here and two down here. I've left my first peg unmarked, so I know these three have to do with my border, and these three have to do with my border. The pattern starts here at peg four and ends right here, the actual pattern. But if you use my border, you would use all 14 pegs. Okay, so the first row we're just going to continue to do wrap two, knit them off, purl one. Wrap two is one, then I'm off, purl one. Same thing, the entire row. Okay. Now I'm showing you the entire pattern here so you get an idea. Oops, lost my pearl stitch. And I found it. And we're going to U-wrap that, U -wrap that last um, stitch. Now, the next row, you're going to go back and do the same thing. We're going to wrap twice. Two pegs is one. Pearl the second peg. Two is one. Pearl the second peg. Two is one. 
Earl the Second Pig. Two is one. Earl the Second Pig. And when we get to the last one, we're going to U-wrap just like we did on row one at the end. Right there. If I shake the camera a little bit, I'm sorry. I'm working at a different angle again today. Okay, now that was row one and two. We're going to start row three. Now from this moment on, row three, four, five, six, seven, eight are going to be wrap two, knit them off, pearl one for all, for the ones that are marked here. These two and these two. All the ones that are marked are going to be wrap two, knit them off, pearl one. So we're going to do that here. Then, before we get to our border again, the main part of the pattern from here to here, we're going to knit one, purl one. You're going to do that all the way across. And then we got to our end pegs. We're going to, remember I said wrap two, knit them off, purl second peg, and you wrap. Now we're on peg, on row four, excuse me. Row four, we're going to wrap two. Remember I said these are always wrapped two, knit them off, and purl the second peg. Now we're starting the actual pattern. We're going to do a knit where we purl to purl where we knit. So in other words, a seed stitch. So here we purl, we're going to knit. We'll knit that one off and purl. Now I leave my loops on mine. You don't have to do that. You can knit them off as you go. This just helps me remind me what I'm doing. Okay, so here we purl, we're going to knit. Here we knit, we're going to knit that loop off, and then we're going to purl it. That loop is from the previous row. Knit and purl. And then we're going to e wrap around both pegs, knit both of them off, purl the second peg, and then you wrap. Okay, now we're on row five. Row five and six are like one and two. We're going to wrap two. Knit them off, purl second peg. Now I kind of suggest if you want to keep a nice clean chain edge, and that's what this will um, create. When you go to pull here, so that loop won't be loose right there, pull it and kind of maybe hold your finger there, pull it tight. I usually don't tell you to put your stitches tight, but I'm telling you too that on the ends. Knit it off. Purl that second peg. That's the only time you need to do that is on the ends. And then we're going to wrap two. Remember I said it's the same as one and two. So we're going to wrap two. Purl. I'm giving you more of a fuller video this time because it's really a project even though I'm not doing the whole project. I am telling you how to make the scarf. Okay, so that is row five. We are finishing up. And you wrap up last peg. Now we're on row six. Remember I said row six is the same as one and two. So we're going to go back and we're going to do the same thing. Now to keep this loop from being loose right here, take your working yarn, pull it around like this. Maybe hold it 
just a little bit taut and then wrap it around well your two pegs and knit it off and then purl and then we're going to go do the same thing as row one and two Okay, now we're at row seven. Row seven's easy peasy. We are going to remember these two and these two. If you're doing my border like this one, wrap two, knit them off, pearl second peg. So we're going to tighten that stitch up. We're going to pull our working yarn. You see the little knot right there? We're going to pull it around so it's tighter. If you have to, you can hold it like this with the other hand. So you don't have that looseness there. Okay. Now, our border has been worked right here. And we're going to start our stitch to row 7. We're going to knit. Knit, meaning the E-wrap knit stitch. So knit 2. Purl 2. Knit two, purl two, and I lost my purl stitch again. Okay, and I do leave my loops on. I've mentioned this before, so I know what I'm supposed to do when I go back. You can go ahead and knit them off. That's up to you. You can mark them, whatever you want to do. Then we're going to wrap two. And purl that second peg. And you wrap. Okay. Now we are at our last row, row eight, going back. And we're going to pull that stitch again. See if I don't pull it, it's, it's loose right here. I'm going to pull it again right here. And I'm going to hold it and wrap my yarn around. And work these two stitches. And purl. Okay. Going back. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to knit where we purled. Purl where we knit. So we purled here. We're going to knit these two. Always when I, uh, for this pattern when I say knit. I mean the E-wrap knit stitch. Unless it's the ends where I U-wrap. We're going to knit these two off. So that way we know to purl them. E wrap, because we purled last. E wrap, it was a purl. Knit off, knit off our previous row. Purl one, purl two. And then we're going to e wrap, I mean, wrap around twice. Two pegs is one. Purl. And e wrap. And that is your pattern, 1 through 8. And you can see it forming right here. Okay. Now, I'm going to do my review and tips. For my review and tips, I wanted to tell you, or show you, I'll, I'll tell you and show you actually, why this pattern needs a border. This is a sample of what the pattern looks like without a border. You can see the edges are not clean. They're a little bit messy. They just don't look tidy. Okay. So that would include, and this is the piece I did vertically, but that would include how I worked this was from this peg to this peg. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It was eight pegs across. Excluding my border, 
the six pegs, the three on this end, and the three on this end. That's what it looks like without a border. You don't want to do that. So this pattern does need some type of border. Now, this is another option. If I can find my sample swatch. And it seems to be missing. I had it laying here with me. Here it is. Okay, this sample swatch, let me see which way is up and down. I've had it. That's, that's right. Okay, this swatch looks better, but it's not great either. I don't personally like it. You might like it. Um, if you do, go for it. It's still giving you a, a chain edge because all I did was put um, a slip peg on the end. So what this is, this is the pattern from here to here. And I just left one peg on the ends and slipped it going back and forth. Okay, that's what that that's what that looks like. Now, like I said, I highly suggest using my border for this because I think it frames the pattern very well and it works very well with it. Um, let me move my camera up a little bit. I think it pattern, you know, it works very well with it. It it equals equalizes it and makes it look um, more crisp and together polished, in my opinion. But if you want to use a different border, go for it. If you do, just remember the pattern is right here. Now, if you do your own border, you can do it as wide as you want. Um, or as not as wide. I mean, not as wide as mine if you don't want. I mean, it's up to you. But if you do it as this is, this tutorial is uh, done, it would be 14 pegs on a half gauge loom. And this would be your two pegs here. This would be your starter peg. Two pegs marked your pattern. Two pegs marked and your starter peg. I mean, your end peg. So that's what I have to show you for the autumn inspired scarf i hope you consider making it some of you um if you wanted to make a shawl out of this you would need to oh and you also need to use even pegs it needs to be even peg loom um you would need to just do a bunch of even pegs and then do your border on the sides for a blanket or a shawl it's up to you, whatever you want to do. If you have questions about making a blanket or shawl with it, let me know uh, about peg count or something, and I'll I'll walk through you with it, um, walk with you through it. <laughs> I said it wrong, but that is all I have today for the autumn inspired scarf. It's not real real heavy, um, but it would be enough for this time of year as it's getting cooler or in early spring if you want to do it in a different color. I really like this orange. I thought it was really pretty for fall. And I didn't want to call it pumpkin spice even though that's the name of the yarn. <laughs> so I just put it autumn inspired. Okay, that's all I have today. Thank you and have a great evening or day wherever you are. Bye-bye.